So uh, jumping right in, just when it comes to our basic principles for, for, for RPO defense, all right, we're primarily a two high quarters variation defense. We're a one gap system, all right? So uh, that kind of gives you the, the, a little bit of a background of what we do. But this is what we teach primarily our linebackers and our safeties and guys who are going to be involved in really defending RPOs. Number one, you've got to be able to see the back's alignment. 90% of the RPOs we get are going to be to the side of, of the back, okay? The second thing is we always want our guys to know where they're stretched, all right? So that starts with seeing the back, back's alignment. Hey, I've got a gap responsibility, but I've also got a pass drop responsibility. Where am I stretched? Where am I at risk for being an RPO read player? The third thing is we always want to take away what our opponent does best when it comes to their RPO. So we played North Central College, great or North Central University, great team uh, in our league, great offense, and they do an unbelievable job uh, with their RPOs. All right, and generally, teams that run RPOs, I think good ones, they really should be called PROs because they're they they want to throw the ball first. So. When you play a team like that, we're going to try and take away what they want to do. A lot of times that's going to be uh, forcing that quarterback to hand the ball off. All right, and the last thing is we've got to be able to tackle the catch. Regardless of what you do, if you're playing against good teams, you know they're going to complete some RPOs on you. Okay, If that's the case, we've got to be able to tackle the slants, the hitches, the outs, uh, the, the stick routes, the things like that to, to uh, force those completions to be five- and six-yard gains and not 25-yard gains and just giving up huge chunk yardage when it comes to RPOs, all right? Um, teaching our linebackers, kind of moving on to our first-level defenders, and these are the guys that that get uh, that get it a ton. Us being a quarters team, it's our linebackers that, that are going to be R, get, get RPO'd a ton, all right? We use the saying, we say it over and over and over again, and Cody heard me say it all the time last year playing for us, don't go until you know, all right? So you've got to be super, super patient. And that starts with recognizing when you're the read player. That means you've got to play with really, really big vision. And I'll get into that here in a little bit. All right. The next thing is patience and efficiency. Really patience in your decision making and then really efficient in your movement. All right. We think those are two critical things to defending RPOs. All right. Diving into the teaching progression and what we what we teach our linebackers. First, if you're going to be good in, in defending RPOs, it starts with really good and controlled read steps. All right. We like to say less is more. We want six-inch gap steps as, as, you read, as you read your keys in terms of your read steps, all right? You can't fly towards the line of scrimmage, all right? The second thing is we want our guys to play with big vision. We want to know – we want them to see when they're getting a conflicting read, all right? What that means when they're getting some type of run and pass key. Right? And a lot of times what that is is it's a, you know, it's, it's a mesh by the quarterback and running back, maybe a pass set from a backside tackle, and then also having vision for um, – the route of their of their pass drop responsibility okay so they've got to have big vision they've got to be able to assess uh, a lot of information in a short amount of time over a over a, a pretty big over a pretty big area okay um but again big vision is absolutely key it's something that we harp on a ton all right the next thing is we want a solid base and staggered feet after we've taken our controlled steps read steps and uh and we've kind of seen a conflicting read the quarterback's burning a hole through our chest with his with his eyes as a read player in RPO, we want to get into a solid base with staggered feet. What that means is we want to have our gap foot up and open to our pass drop responsibility. What that's going to allow us to do is to burst in either direction. So we're trying to create as much indecision in that quarterback as we can. All right, we want to be able to either burst to uh, whether it's an inside zone, wide zone, whatever the play may be. If that ball's handed off, we want to be able to burst to that and take care of our gap responsibility. But at the same time, if, if the quarterback pulls the ball and is ready to trigger, we want to be able to burst underneath uh, the route that he's trying to throw on that RPO, okay? The next thing is we want our guys to be able to feel the receiver and feel the route, all right? And the quarterback, quarterback's eyes and shoulders can tell you a lot, all right? Um, and generally, you, you, we're going to play an opponent and uh, – by formation and, and just what they like to do, we, we have a general idea of, hey, these are their top RPOs, whether it's RPO slant, whether it's RPO stick. Um, you know, we're going to have a ton of repetition against those routes. We want those our guys to be able to feel the receiver and feel the route. We even got to the point sometimes in the, in the the during the season where we were, we were okay with our linebackers man turning on like a slant or something like that that we were trying to take away. And if, if they can recognize RPO soon enough, well enough, and you're able to take a peek out at, at your working man, as we call it, the guy that you're ultimately relating to in your pass drop, we 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 let our guys do that um, just because it, it, it put them in a really good spot to defend that route. 
okay? The last thing is patient and efficient movement. Again, you can't go until you know. Don't go until you know. You've got to wait to burst until your read is defined. That means when either that ball is handed off or that quarterback raises up to throw the RPO. All right, and it's so counterintuitive for linebackers uh, because, you know, they're taught all their life, press the line of scrimmage, press the line of scrimmage, uh, be in attack mode, play downhill. Well, these type of plays prey on that, and you've got to be patient, and it's something that we try to work with our guys a bunch on is being patient and, and, and recognizing with big vision when, uh, when you're in an RPO situation. Okay, let's look at a little bit of drill work. And the drill kind of looks funny. My guys laughed at me when we first started doing it. We just do an RPO drill. Okay, so we've got a linebacker here, and we've got a little we've got a little hitch route um, by the by the number two or number three receiver. This is our Mike linebacker. All right, and all we're working on is for him to play with big vision and be really patient. Don't go until you know. So right here, this is Eric Stevenson, our starting linebacker from Dallas, Texas. Um, you can even see he he takes initially his reset steps aren't bad, a little slow. But then he presses the line of scrimmage even a little too much for my liking. I mean, he wants to take his read steps. He wants to get that right foot up, that gap foot up, all right, have that nice stagger, and he's ready to burst in either direction, all right? So we get that a bunch with our guys, guys who they think, oh, man, I've got to be moving my feet. I've got to be going somewhere instead of just being really patient and almost like flat foot reading the thing. Not an, Overall, not a terrible rep from Eric. Here's another one for him on the other side. Again, too much. Too many steps. You see how his read steps are bigger than six inches. But ultimately, this is the this is the position we want him right here. His gap foot is up. He's got that staggered stance, and he's ready to burst in either direction. He just needs to slow himself down. He takes two extra steps, two extra steps that we don't need. Right here, we're giving him that conflicting read. He's getting the pass set by the by the backside guard. He sees the mesh point. That's got to trigger him and alert something in his brain that he's got an RPO. Uh, he, he's in an RPO situation, and he's the read player. <clears throat> this isn't bad by one of our, our senior backup linebackers right here. Again, I don't like this hop here at the end, but ultimately he ends up in the right position that we want. With that staggered stance, his gap foot is up, and he's ready to burst in either direction. <clears throat> Overall, not bad. Overall, not bad. All right. Now we get this a lot with some of our guys. This is one of our this is one of our two B senior linebackers who's just full of piss and vinegar and wants to press the line of scrimmage. Even in this drill, he can't help himself. This is not efficient movement right here. He ends up gaining two two yards towards the line of scrimmage, gets sucked in on the RPO. That's a really clear read, even for an old guy with a terrible arm like me. Uh, it's an easy pitch and catch. All right, so that's not what we want. That's not that efficient movement. That's not being patient. Um, it doesn't matter. Hey, he ends up in the right stance. That's great. Well, he's he's two yards off the from the line of scrimmage, and that read is clearly defined for the quarterback. We haven't created any indecision in his mind. Um, that's easy pitch and catch. Same thing. This is an, this is one of our two uh, B junior linebackers, and just is all in his own head. And what is he not doing? He's not waiting. He's not being patient. He's not. He's going before he knows. So you see. It, at the snap of the ball, he's guessing. Oh, it's RPO. I'm, I'm about to drop underneath this hitch. Oh, shoot, the ball's the ball's been given. No, it hasn't. All right. And he's moved about six yards and he's only covered about two ground or two yards. Uh he's moved six yards, but he's only two yards of ground, if that makes sense. So that's the definition of being inefficient in his movement. That's not what we want. Gotta be patient. Don't go until you know. Okay. Here's uh here here's it showing up a little bit in some game film. All right. This is uh from 2015 against Coke College. Our middle linebacker footwork isn't great. You see how he ends up with a base with that with his uh, his gap foot actually behind his uh, his trail foot, but ultimately his patience pretty good triggers on the triggers on the quarterback's eyes and shoulders and is able to get underneath that throwing lane. All right, is it perfect? No, but it also makes that throw a little bit harder because he's bursting he's bursting to that uh, <clears throat> to that slant. All right, we talk about knowing when you're stretched, all right, and feeling the receiver. This is our will linebacker, okay? He gets uh, <clears throat> he gets an inside zone read, and he starts he starts charging towards the line of scrimmage. He doesn't do a great job. Recognizes RPO, does a really good job of feeling the receiver and feeling the route, getting underneath this stick, this stick route, makes the quarterback hold it, double clutch, 
and uh, ultimately forces an incompletion. You know, they, they want to go to number two with the ball here, not number one. Uh, they want to go to that. They want to go to that inside receiver, that slot receiver. But uh, the Will linebacker does a great job bursting underneath, bursting underneath uh, uh, number two, feeling the route, feeling the receiver. Does a really good job. And now we're looking at the second and ten play. All right, this is from this last year, and this is the RPO that we probably saw the most, um, and and it, it hurt us a decent amount. Was this RPO slant play? So we're getting a wide zone read. You see our linebacker here. His read steps aren't terrible. Probably takes a little. Is probably a little inefficient in his movement. All right, this Sam linebacker down here to the bottom of the screen. All right, but what he doesn't do is he doesn't feel the receiver. All right, he doesn't. The quarterback. You watch the quarterback. You see the quarterback shoulder and the quarterback sight line. All right, I've never seen a quarterback look. You know, make a no look pass. He's staring down this slant. We just don't do a very good job of feeling the receiver or feeling the route. It gets snuck in behind us, and uh, and we get hurt for a first down. So that's what we talk about. We talk about feeling the receiver, feeling the route. The quarterback's eyes and shoulders can tell you a ton. Right here, you know that ball is being thrown somewhere towards the middle of the field or even the opposite hash. And uh, our Sam linebacker is just a little too late to, to cue on that. Same thing right here. Same thing. Read steps aren't good. He's hopping around. Not very efficient in his movement and then just doesn't feel the route. Our Mike linebacker, who's not even the RPO player, does a great job of bursting into this slant and, and creating that, making that window even smaller. But this, uh, this kid that's playing quarterback at North Central, really talented kid, big arm, um, and runs these really, really well.